My wife, Sarah, she's always particularly careful about getting ready for the Passover. You know what women can be like? They like to think they're in charge and sometimes it's easier to let them be. Anyway, Sarah would always spend a couple of days beforehand asking all the obvious questions. Had I done this? Had I done that? Ariel, have you made arrangements for the sacrifice? And are we sharing lamb with Reuben's family again this year? She could drive you mad, my Sarah. <laughs> but at least everything got done. So I was a bit surprised that evening when someone came down from the upper room. I was even more surprised when I realised that it was him, you know, Jesus. Although perhaps I shouldn't have been. He wanted a bowl and a towel. I was a bit taken aback, actually. Usually everything you need for the Passover is ready. Sarah sees to that. I wondered what sort of a bowl I should give him. It didn't seem him right to give him the ordinary bowls that we use every day. I had three of them. They were all plain clay, undecorated, workaday earthenware, chipped and stained. They were used for everything. I used them to wash down the tables. Travellers would use them to wash their feet in. And as for a towel, all I had was the rags cut from the cloth we couldn't use for anything else anymore. We're a plain, ordinary family, really. And everything gets twice as much use as it was designed for. The bowl and the towel just didn't seem good enough for someone who'd been hailed as the King of God just a few days before. Anyway, it didn't matter. Jesus just smiled and said, that bowl will do Ariel. And he grabbed the one I was about to swill down the floor with. And the clean towel? Well, all right then, the bit of rag I just had slung over my shoulder. I know I probably shouldn't have done it, but I followed him back to the room that he was in with his disciples. I wanted to see what he was going to do with them. I hung around outside the door for a while and then when I felt it was safe I slipped in and Jesus was kneeling on the floor in front of one of his disciples. I think it was Simon Barjona, the fisherman, and he was actually washing his feet. There, there'd obviously been some sort of fuss about it and Simon was looking a little uncomfortable. <laughs> no wonder really. I mean, it's a servant's job, washing the feet. You wouldn't expect the Messiah, the Son of God, to be washing your feet. Much more likely, you'd be washing his. He did a proper job, though, I'll give him that. Not just a sprinkler and a wipe with a towel. He really put his all into washing those feet. He made it seem that even a menial job can be really important. He knelt like a servant and gave that task a royal dignity. He took the most ordinary of objects, a chipped bowl and an old towel, and he made us feel like we'd witness God himself at work. And although what he did was a picture of humility, it was us who felt humbled by his simple goodness.